beautiful day. Um, good afternoon. I'm Janice Selinger, Executive Director of Crossroads of the American Revolution Association, Inc. We're the nonprofit managing arm of New Jersey's only national heritage area and the only one of 55 NHAs in this country specifically dedicated to the American Revolution. Crossroads also works with the New Jersey Historical Commission in a private public partnership for the commemoration of the 250th anniversary of the United States. We're glad you could join us today for about an hour and a half. No more than that, overview and questions concerning an exciting new Crossroads project, our statewide heritage travel app. Those of you who attended our annual meeting earlier this month heard about the first part of the mobile travel app, the 10 crucial days and the road to Morristown. We were able to start the work by reapplying federal funding from the National Park Service that was budgeted for hands-on workshops in person, travel and consultants, all unused during the pandemic. And thanks also to the payroll protection program, we also saved some on salaries. We're seeking additional support through grants to complete the work on the first routes. And we're applying for larger grants to fund other routes that we have planned. Today, we'll be sharing more information about our vision for a network of trails that will cover much of the state, as well as the technology. And we'll be telling you about how it works. But I want to start by discussing the approach that we will be taking. One of the benefits of New Jersey's rich revolutionary heritage is that we have many historical stories to tell about real people and places. Crossroads aims to tell these stories from many perspectives to bring to life the people who lived in New Jersey during the American Revolution. We all probably know something about the Declaration of Independence and about the major battles. But what happened when able-bodied men and boys went off to war for years, leaving behind women and children, the enslaved, the elderly, and the handicapped? How did they manage during eight long years of what was a civil war here in New Jersey? This is very much in keeping with Crossroads Revolutionary Neighbors Program, which profiles more than 60 people with different backgrounds. These are people who faced life-changing decisions during this era. Their stories can help 21st century Americans relate, rev, relate to revolutionary era challenges and relate those to their own lives today and leave them curious to find out more. Each app trail will offer a sample of life experience while opening travelers' eyes to the wealth of historic sites and programs that New Jersey's revolutionary heritage community offers. The app is not intended to contain every detail. The purpose is not to track the exact route of march or mark key events in battle. Our hope is that people will, will discover revolutionary stories through the app, building an appetite to discover even more, which is where our many partners and friends come into the picture to fill in those blanks at your sites programs, and events. Now, first, some quick, quick housekeeping. Um, this session will be recorded, and it will be posted on our website. We're going to be giving you an opportunity to ask questions, but we're asking you to post those questions in the chat and to mute yourself and turn off your camera, other than the speakers who will have their cameras on 
during the presentation. And we will get to as many of those questions um, as we can uh, during the presentation. We will answer others after the presentation. Amy Osterhout, who is our program manager, will monitor the questions. She'll also be uh, providing you with her contact information at the end of the presentation, and she will be our point person for any follow-up questions. And um, I know that uh, I think when you logged on, you did give us your contact information, but if you have not given us your name and your contact information, please put that in chat because we would love to be able to be back in touch with you. Um, with that, I'd like to introduce the people that are gonna be speaking to us today. Um, first, Story Clark from Travel Stories GPS is our technology partner for the app. Travel Stories has produced more than 170 web-based tours in 36 states and three countries. We're going to have a brief demonstration of the app by Story and her team. And then we're going to hear from Crossroads board member, Patrick Murray. And Patrick Murray will show us how Crossroads will use the app for our heritage tourism routes. And then we'll hear from Cheryl Hargrove, who will speak about the heritage tourism experience that the app has to offer. And then we will get to your questions. Um, so I'm now going to turn this over to Story Clark. Thank you, Janice, uh, so much. And thank you, Sally and Patrick and all of the Crossroads team. Plus, it's great to see so many familiar faces uh, on this uh, call. So uh, welcome to you all. So as Janice said, Travel Stories is, a, is, a, our, is the partner for Crossroads on this exciting project. We are mission driven to interpret cultural, historic, travel and recreational sites all around the United States. We work on downtowns, we work on scenic byways, trails, we even have a chairlift tour. But our main goal is to assist communities, nonprofits, Native American tribes and agencies to tell their stories in the most authentic way we possibly can, they possibly can, and to broaden their audiences and inspire travel in all sorts all around the United States. So uh, with that, I'm just gonna share the screen and show you a few slides. So as I say, our goal is to assist you in whatever way you need to really create a mobile experience and a website experience to experience all of these incredible sites that exist in New Jersey. Um, around the American Revolution. So the opportunity here is to bring history to life across New Jersey. And the real specific opportunity of doing that through mobile is that we can interpret those sites on site, but also at home because we have a remote uh, presence as well, a website presence. We guide travelers to those historic sites with wayfinding, and then we offer hands-free safe interpretation because you never have to touch your phone. Eyes are on the sites and the road and not on the phone. We can introduce your history and your stories to new demographics because younger people are very, very focused on getting all their travel information through mobile. Non-English spe speakers easily through translation and visually impaired um, travelers who really miss out on a lot if they don't hear these stories through audio. We can highlight funders and sponsoring organizations and give powerful analytics about your travelers to help you refine uh, your storytelling and also your um, marketing of the stories. So our goal is to connect people to places in memorable ways through the currency of storytelling. We believe that people are hardwired to hear audio stories and to connect to place through audio. So we use that medium fully to guide people to great locations and then enrich their travel while they're, while they're there. 
I'm going to just go through the fundamental core features of the app. And then I'm going to ask Christy, who is actually um, pictured here, to give you a demonstration, which is really how to understand um, the, the app. So first and foremost, the audio triggers automatically, heads up, hands free. So you never look at your phone. You put your phone away and you hear about what you see. So you connect directly with where you are, not with your phone. No cell service is, is needed. This is really, really great because whether there happens to be no cell service along a route of travel, like a scenic byway, or even in communities where the broadband is completely saturated, it's great not to have to access uh, cell service to use the app. We can go at the pace of your travel. So whether you're walking slowly, fast, driving slowly, fast, or however you travel. And again, we provide audio wayfinding. So at each intersection, at each place, you might not know which way to go to get to the site. We provide customized uh, audio wayfinding. The app is all in one. So all of the tours present together, which is great for the traveler because the first tours to come up are the ones nearest to the traveler. And so they can start at one tour and then they can go to another. So they could be taking a route from uh, Trenton to Morristown and they see other sites along the way, other tours, and they can jump on those. It's also great for the sponsoring organizations because they can, the tours market each other you get one sponsor that's heavily marketing a tour and another that may not be able to it nearby, able to do as much marketing nearby. And uh, they, get, they get also uh, marketing value. Really during tourism recovery, this is where we really shine. So because it's self-guided and socially distanced, it can be used uh, for interpretation in a very diverse and dispersed way. It's highly accessible content because it's audio. As I said, it's any mode of travel and it's being used through COVID incredibly frequently for trip planning for those frustrated travelers who, who would like to be out on the road but uh, can't yet. These are a few uh, benefits uh, that we've designed, especially for this time of COVID. And Christy will demonstrate these. One is street view. You can actually drive along, walk along uh, from your computer while you're listening to the audio at home. And we also have a play all feature so you can listen to the tours as a podcast. We go indoors and out. And while that's obviously wonderful, whether or not you can go into the buildings, it's particularly great when you can't go into the buildings because you can actually tour the sites around a building, a museum, a historic house, uh, from outside of that building. We also have added visit video presentations. So in addition to having a slideshow of images that accompany the audio, you can also add um, video features. And this is just a quick sampling of some of the, the tours we've built, uh, national parks, scenic byways, historic trail and sites. And it really is a, a specialty of ours and um, a passion of ours. So I'd like to introduce Christy Koryakin, who is our um, Director of, protection, of uh, Production, and she's going to give a presentation of how to use the app. So Christy, it's all yours. Hello, everybody. My name is Christy Koryakin, and I'm the Director of Production here at Travel Stories. My job is really to help organizations turn information into immersive storytelling uh, experiences. So more than just stories, we're actually experiencing these stories on the ground where it's most relevant to the user. And what I want to do today is I want to walk you through the app because it's all great to show you all the features and tell you all the things it does. But what's most important is to really show rather than tell and also to show you how you can explore on your own. So I'm going to share my screen here and also share my um, my app screen. I'm gonna turn off my video just because my internet doesn't like so many things going on at once. So you got to see my face, but I think it'll be more interesting for you to see the app itself. So this is my phone here. Um, to download the app, you will go, it, it's, it's downloadable for um, any smartphone. So an Android or Apple phone, um, just go to the Google Play Store if you're on Android or the Apple Store if you are on a, uh, an Apple phone. 
type in travel stories. You can see travel stories is spelled S-T-O-R-Y-S. Don't worry if you spell it S-T-O-R-I-E-S, it will still pop up. Um, download the app and you'll see a little icon like this. And once you open the app, it will look something, oops, something like this. Uh, it will look a little different for you because what's happening here is I am in Jackson, Wyoming. So I am seeing my nearby tours closest to me. So I'm seeing Yellowstone. As I zoom down a little further, I'm seeing the Snow King Scenic Chairlift. I'm seeing historic downtown Jackson, a lot of tours in our area. Um, if you click over to this tab over here, you'll see all of our tours on a map view. And you can see there's your tour highlighted there, the 10 crucial days, the Crossroads tour. Um, but we have 170 tours currently up on the app in 36 states, three countries, and 34 in production. So every day we get more and more. <laughs> and you can see this is my location here. So I can either find tours by nearby first, you know, that might be the way you want to find them, what's closest to me. Or I can look on the map and say, okay, I want to see you know, what's in Yellowstone and maybe head up to Yellowstone. Maybe I'm heading over to Cody, Wyoming, and I want to check out this tour. Um, so kind of two ways to find tours in that in that way. You can also see that this, this our app, of course, is very heavily location-based. So you can see my location is this little blue dot here, and that will follow you along as you move around in the app. Um, and that's going to be important later as we get into looking at, at how the tour triggers. You can also go over to this tab here, the search tab and just type in keywords or um, states. Let's go to New Jersey, for example. Well, actually, let's do 10 crucial days first, just to show you what we've got up on the app so far. Your, the Crossroads tour is coming soon. So that's like, so exciting to see that coming, coming soon. Um, but let's see some tours that are already up. Uh, so let's type in New Jersey. Type in New Jersey. We get some tours that are coming soon, but also some tours from our partners um, DNR Greenway, um, the Trust for Public Lands, uh, several other uh, Petty's Island tours over here. So let's take a look at um, one of these tours just to show you how they all work. As you can see, we've got different modes of travel. This is an, a, a tour built by our, uh, our tour building sponsor, DNR Greenway. They have a paddling tour and a walking tour of the same area. So again, as story, just to reiterate, we can do multiple modes of travel. Um, we have a, a lot of driving tours and a lot of walking tours, m working on our paddling tours and even a chairlift tour. <laughs> and so let's go over to our walking tour of the Abbott Marshlands. And as you can see here, this tour has already been downloaded. The way you can tell that is because I've got a green arrow here. So this tour has already, all the content is on my phone. That means if I go out of cell phone service, if I go out of Wi-Fi, a uh, Wi-Fi zone, I don't need I don't need that in order for this tour to trigger automatically. It's gonna use satellite to trigger the content for you. So you don't need um, any cell phone service once you have your tour downloaded. If you see this blue arrow, that means the tour has not been downloaded. Just tap on that and it will begin to download and then you will have the tour cached to your phone. Well, then that's just a quick example there, but so let's go into the walking, the Abbott Marshlands tour. As you can see here, we've got multiple tracks. So we can either choose English or Spanish. Um, I think most people on the call speak English. So let's go with the English track. As we open up the tour, it'll give us a little intro. Travel stories, play it by ear. Welcome to the Abbott Marshlands Walking Tour, sponsored by DNR Greenway Land Trust with support from the William Penn Foundation. This tour has four separate routes that begin at the Topahawking Nature Center, Bordentown Beach, the Bordentown Bluffs, and Northern Community Park. Take your pick and we'll meet you at the first stop. So you get a little auto intro just to get you oriented to what are we about to do here. Um, and then there are multiple ways to explore a travel stories tour. Obviously, I'm not in New Jersey, so I am not going to be able to do the on site experience because you can see my location is way over here in Wyoming. But as you I can still take this tour of New Jersey um, remotely. And that's what we're going to we're going to do. If you were on the ground, you would see your blue dot following you around. And as you got close to the sites, you could put your phone in your pocket and you wouldn't even have to look at your phone. It would just trigger the audio automatically. And this is especially important for driving tours um, because, of course, we want people to be safe and not have their phones up as they're trying to drive. But also for for all kinds of tours, we really want people to have the heads up, hands free, 
looking at the sites in the field um, and not have their phone be, you know, kind of a barrier rather than a, a, a portal um, into where they actually are. So let's just take a look. So each of these little, little sites here is what we call a, a story site, or sometimes we'll call them geotags. Um, they all have content associated with them. If you were to get close to this in the field, it would just trigger the audio automatically and tell you about the site. Since I'm not there, I'm going to tap on it and I'm going to listen to it remotely. Hi, I'm Kelly Ripkema, manager of the Tulpa Hawking Nature Center. I'll be one of your guides today. Welcome to Roebling Park. This portion of the Abbott Marshlands was preserved as a wildlife sanctuary through the dedicated efforts of local citizens beginning in 1937. And I'm just going to pause it there because you have the chance to go in and actually explore these tours on your own. Um, and I, I hope you do to see all the different types of content that we have from conservation content to um, historical content to cultural content. As you can see, there's images associated with each um, story site, up to five per story site. If you tap on the images, you also get a, a caption that's associated with that, that um, image. Tap again and they disappear. You can read along with the text if you're, and again, this is, you know, I'm looking at this remotely. If I were in field, I would put this in my pocket and I would just be listening to the stories and looking around me because I would be able to see most of this. <laughs> but if you're looking remotely and trip planning or thinking about going here, this is very helpful to be able to see some images and to get a sense of what it is that we you know, want, to, want to explore here. Um, so each site has images, text, and audio associated with it. Let's just explore uh, another one of our, our story sites down a little more southerly here. Um, let's do historical figures. As you stroll along the creeks and down the streets of Bordentown, you are walking in the footsteps of some of the most famous and notorious figures in American history. These trails and streets have been used by revolutionaries, inventors, artists, heroes, and kings. Let's take a few moments to visit with two historic Bordentown residents. So I'm going to leave a cliffhanger there so you have to go back and check out who are those two infamous historic Bordentown residents. <laughs> um, so, so that's just a little sample of um, one of your neighboring tours there. I want to uh, back up just a little bit and show you some of our other tours. Um, so a couple of one tour that I find or one one engagement that we um, participated in was with the historic Hudson River towns um, in the Hudson River Valley. And I find that to be a good example to show all of you here because it kind of has the same um, depth of collaboration and the capacity to grow into multiple tours. So I'm going to search for HHRT, which is short for historic Hudson River towns and just show you that they have six full tours. Oops. Six tours branded for them. And as I do that, I'm going to show you this little little um, rack card that they've built here. Six tours uh, branded for them. One that goes all the way around. All, we worked with 16 different river communities to build this tour. And we also built spur tours in Nyack and in Terrytown, Sleepy Hollow and Irvington, and also tours over the Mario M. Cuomo Bridge, walking and biking. So six tours out of this one little area. And that's the kind of um, cool thing that Travel Stories can do is uh, build multiple routes in one area, maybe for different demographics or different modes of travel, or perhaps it's just a different theme. So I wanna open up um, the Historic Cuts and River Towns tour, the, the most comprehensive, the one that we work with 16 different communities on. I'll show you the route there. Travel Stories. Welcome to the historic Hudson River Towns driving tour. At a time when concern about public health and safety is running high, this new tour is a great way to explore. It can be enjoyed at home, on a scenic drive in your car, or outside while practicing social distancing. We feel sure that you will take great pleasure in experiencing all that our historic places, parks, riverfronts, and downtowns have to offer, knowing that visiting hours may be limited. And so that's, a, that's an intro from one of our partners at Historic Hudson River Towns. What's great about the app is that it is digital. And so we can add in messages like that COVID message just to make sure that 
um, the content stays up to date that there are, um, we can change the content out depending on what's going on in the world. Um, and you can see there, we've got that COVID message in there to keep people safe. Um, we will take that out obviously when things start opening back up uh, and that's very easy to do, make changes like that. As you can see, this tour runs all the way from Yonkers up to peak skill over the Bear Mountain Bridge. I'll just let you, I'll let you listen to a, a story or two. Let's go to Stony Point Battlefield. A small peninsula that juts out into the Hudson River is Stony Point Battlefield State Historic Site. On July 16th, 1779, this is where Brigadier General Anthony Wayne led a daring midnight attack during the Revolutionary War. His group of highly... So again, you're going to have to go back and check that out for yourself. Um, and please do check out all the different content on our on our tours. So this was our, our main kind of what we call our uh, spoke tour, meaning it is, I mean, hub tour is what I meant to say. Um, this is the, the hub. So it builds kind of a great skeleton. It builds a great um, uh, structure for us to build tours off of. And so what we did from here is we actually built out tours, downtown walking tours in the towns of Terrytown, Irvington, Sleepy Hollow, Nyack, and walking tours over the bridge. So I want to show you what I mean by that. So we did more intensive tours in those areas. So the possibilities are really endless. And when you go to this area, Travel Stories has covered basically all of the, the, um, the places you might want to go and walk. <laughs> all of the cultural sites are basically covered for you. So let me just show you one more tour here. We'll go to Terrytown, Sleepy Hollow, and Irvington, and I'll give you a little sample. Travel Stories. Thanks for joining us on this audio walking tour of Terrytown, Sleepy Hollow, and Irvington, New York, presented by the historic Hudson River Towns and the state of New York. We'll meet you at the next... I'm going to pause there. Let's go down and visit a site that maybe some of you are familiar with. We'll go to Lindhurst. Named after the linden trees that grow throughout the property, Lindhurst has been the private home of a New York City mayor, a successful New York businessman, and a railroad mogul. With its stunning views of the Hudson River, it's also one of the finest examples of American Gothic revival architecture in the whole country. And so I, I, I uh, again, urge you to go into the app, check it out for yourself, listen to these, some of these stories on your own. Even while Lindhurst may have been closed for COVID, people could still drive up to the site and hear the, hear the story without even going inside of the property, which is kind of um, really relevant for today's world. Of course, what we want in the future is for people to get so excited about this that they go into Lindhurst and take a tour and, you know, actually um, explore the area more. So from there, I wanna show you, so this is all app-based, of course. You have to have the Travel Stories app, um, but what we do have is we have something, we have a replica of all of our tours that are web-based. And so let's say you have someone who just isn't ready to download the app or doesn't understand how to download an app. You can, you can find all of our tours on our website under tours, and all of our tours are listed here. You can search for them. Or even better, what we've done with Historic Huts and River Towns is we've actually plugged these tours into their website. So if you go to their particular website, you can find these tours plugged right in. They look like they're coming straight out of their website, even though it's just an extension of their tour. All they had to do is 20 minutes of work and these tours are plugged right in. If you click here, we'll see all six of their tours located here. And all you have to do is click on the walking tour and it shows up right here. And it's a complete replica of the tour with a few couple, a couple extra additions. So I'm gonna show you, let's go to Lindhurst, for example. So I'll search for Lindhurst. You can see I've already done that. There it is right there, open that up. Same content. Named after the linden trees that go throughout the property. Lind What's cool though about this, this um, platform is that we know that people are at their desktop. So they're exploring remotely. So we wanted to give them um, more of a feeling of being on site and really exploring the area. So we've got what's called street view. So in addition to the images, you can also click on street view and actually see the location on the ground. So I can just gonna push play and then I'll, look, I'll drive you around the property. Hearst has been the private home of a New York City mayor, a successful New York businessman and a railroad mogul. With its stunning views of the Hudson River, it's also one of the finest examples of American Gothic revival architecture in the whole country. The property was originally built in 1838 
for General William Paulding Jr., a former New York City mayor, and was officially named the No. However, some locals weren't fans of the asymmetrical fit. So you can see, you kind of feel like you're actually there, even though you're exploring from your desktop. Again, the point of this is to get people interested, download the app, and actually come to the location. So um, multiple ways to get the content out to, to users, whether they want to download the app or not. And I, I think, unless there are any other things that, uh, you know, story you want me to point out, I think that's a, a good demo for now. I really encourage you to download the app for yourself, check out our website, check out all of our tours, um, and uh, see what the app has to offer. Dory and Christy, we have a couple quick questions from our uh, chat. Um, hold on, I think we're gonna hold off on the questions until the end, if we can, Amy, okay? okay. And let Patrick uh, do his presentation. Cause I, you know, so if people don't mind, we will we will address, uh, address the questions, but we are gonna hold off on that. Patrick? Okay. I am going to uh, talk about the overall uh, picture, uh, you know, the larger concept of, of where we're trying to fit this in. Uh, and you saw a map on the opening slide when uh, Janice was talking here. Uh, but what Crossroads is trying to achieve with this particular um, um, app here, and I'm just Give me just one second because I just have to change uh, a setting here on my screen. There we go. It is basically serving a number of different functions. Uh, as Janice mentioned, we are not trying to recreate a step-by-step, -step, a historic route um, as it existed. Uh, in some cases, if we tried to do that, we would be taking people through the middle of cemeteries or having them uh, search for markers behind VFW halls uh, and all sorts of things, which are not conducive to the overall traveler experience. And that is what we're trying to do. We're trying to introduce people, get them off of the turnpike, off of the parkway and off of route one and all those other routes and into New Jersey and through the towns and places uh, that provide a engaging and rewarding experience. Um, by using uh, our American Revolution story to introduce them to those places, at the same time by engaging them and informing them and uh, having them you know, feel the relevance of what happened uh, 250 years ago to their lives today. So there's a larger mission as well, in addition to the heritage tourism mission, of introducing people to stories that they feel that they can connect to. Uh, and that includes people who have been and groups who have been historically underrepresented uh, in the stories of the American Revolution. And we're going to do that by using basically five events that happened in New Jersey that create these spines that we're going to use to kind of hang the tours on. And in chronological order, uh, they include uh, the retreat across the Jerseys, 10 crucial days and the subsequent road to Morristown. Uh, then we moved to South Jersey during uh, the winter in, in Valley Forge during the, the, what was called the Great Cow Chase, uh, which was uh, a cattle drive uh, from Salem, New Jersey uh, that went to Valley Forge to feed uh, and uh, provide goods and services and leather and all sorts of things to uh, the army. Then subsequent to that, of course, we all know the Battle of Monmouth and the road to Monmouth. And ending with uh, the final uh, march to victory, the Washington Rochambeau route. Uh, this is the Washington part of the Washington Rochambeau route. Of course, there are, as we know, there's a spider vein of routes uh, related to the Washington Rochambeau route that also cover a significant part of the heavily populated parts of New Jersey. And in addition to that, there are many, many opportunities uh, for spur routes along the way. Um, these are just some examples. None of these particular routes are written in stone right now, except to the point where we start actually building the tours. And even then, um, we have opportunities to modify. If something comes on board down the road, a, a historic uh, site 
that hadn't been open in the past, but suddenly is open and is very germane to uh, some of the stories that we're telling, that we can actually you know, modify the route. As Christy said, it's all digital. So we can go back and replug in directions and, and modify the route in order to bring them to this new site that is now something that is engaging uh, for residents. What, when trying to build these routes and create these routes, we're trying to create um, routes that are both scenic as well as provocative. Uh, so some of these routes are urban routes um, and where we're telling stories uh, about uh, the impact of the American Revolution on uh, the communities that we're passing through and how that has relevance to today. Uh, but the scenic routes will bring people through. Uh, they connect sites that have uh, regular visitor services and visitor hours with sites that do not. And as Christy showed you, there's an opportunity for those sites that are not open all the time to create kind of mini spur tours, maybe walking around their grounds. Um, and you can actually use the, you know, if you're walking, then maybe at some points you can pick the phone out of your pocket um, to look at some pictures inside a building that is not open at the time while it's being described to you as you then continue to explore this. This is all building kind of an experience where, where maybe none existed at the point before and also using this interest in some of these larger sites which do attract visitors to bring people out into these other sites and through these communities where they'll also be spending money on food and shopping and all these other things. I just wanna give you one example of how this is rolling out by using our, our first tour that we're planning right now, 10 Crucial Days. Um, so you can see on the map, uh, the, the route from right now from Washington Crossing uh, into Princeton following the battles. Um, it will continue up from Princeton uh, for, on that last day uh, to the march to uh, Morristown. Uh, but on this uh, route here, you can see these green pins, or excuse me, green, orange pins are uh, where we're going to be telling stories. And that has a lot to do with the site itself, as well as the timing of the drive. You want to give people stories as they drive. So they're, they're constantly engaged with this route as we're also telling them, you know, turn right here at the bridge at Jacobs Creek. And there are some signs on the side of the road which can explain, which will explain to you exactly how that crossing was made with the artillery and so forth. Uh, the gray stars and the gray pins uh, are other sites that we might not have on the tour per se in terms of them being directly mentioned, but these are markers and signs uh, that people will pass along the way. As I mentioned, we are not sticking directly to uh, historic sites, for example, or excuse, excuse me, historic routes. For example, uh, these blue stars out here, uh, they are the obelisks that mark Washington's route. Now, if you've ever driven this road out here, you know that there are a lot of uh, Taco Bells and other things in the aforementioned cemeteries where you have to drive into the middle of in order to see some of these markers. Uh, many others are hidden behind trees. Uh, and so, uh, you know, in order to provide a better experience for the driver once they leave Trenton is that we're going to tell them we're not going to follow Washington's exact route, his back door route, but we'll describe it as we head up to a six and describe some of the other things that happened. And then we will, re we will rejoin Washington's route out here um, uh, on Quaker Road and then come into Princeton Battlefield uh, that way. And we'll be explaining that to them along the way as we tell all these other interesting stories. and they drive through Lawrenceville and maybe stop for something to eat uh, as well. Another opportunity, as we mentioned, you know, to plug in some additional things, uh, we can also build a spur over here along the Delaware River about the preparations, you know, between the retreat across the Jerseys and the crossing of the Delaware itself on Christmas Day. We have all these preparations that were made along this area of the Delaware River on both sides uh, of the river. Uh, including, you know, the, the, the Goat Hill over here um, outside of Lambertville, where Washington uh, observed uh, the, the, the stowing away and hiding of, of the boats along the river so the British couldn't follow them across. And what's great about this is that this is both a driving tour and a biking tour uh, that can possibly be added on and continue. And in fact, the biking tour itself could continue down here into uh, Trenton by following the, the canal path there. So there are a lot of opportunities uh, for making these connections and just continually building on these tours um, as we move forward.
Uh, but that is overall the concept right now. Uh, one thing that I want to point out, as we are starting to build these tours, we will be reaching out. Amy is our, uh, our contact person with all our partners about sites that we're going to pass along the way, making sure that, that your site is, you know, if, you're, if we're passing your site, that we're representing it uh, positively, that we are encouraging people to stop and see more about your site. We're not going to be able to tell the entire story of your site, but we will encourage them. And as I said, there might be opportunities for you to add sub tours or, or spurs off of that, off of our tour into your site itself as well. Um, the other thing is that we are, are, are looking at the different storylines and different themes that we have to tell along the way and where we're going to fit those in. So those themes that are not necessarily directly related to these events that these spines represent, uh, but are integral to the, our overall mission of telling a complete story uh, that also uh, makes people feel that, you know, parts of historically underrepresented groups in these stories are represented in the people that feel, feel the relevance to them today and the impact on their own local communities as well. Uh, so that is overall where I, where, what I have to say about the overall uh, plan here of uh, the tour. And again, just wanna mention that this is not written in stone yet, um, but these are the, basically the spines that we're going to be using to conceptualize what we're doing. And as we unveil these, as we start planning on these, we will be working closely with all our partners from our historic sites to uh, our, uh, our heritage tourism folks and, and, and general tourism folks as well uh, along the way. Great. I think uh, we would like to hear from um, Cheryl Hargrove um, now about uh, obviously what this means for the heritage tourism experience. And then we will get definitely have plenty of time to get to questions. So um, Cheryl. Thank you, Janice. You know, one of the things that's so wonderful about this product is that it really will help um, provide an opportunity for heritage travelers to have an easy way to access information. And it will really serve to help one of the real objectives about heritage tourism, which is to keep them longer in the state so that they do in indeed spend more money in the communities. It also, I think, is a way to really entice them to learn more educational travel, especially multi-generational, or looking for those kinds of stories that have context and that can help them then think about even why to come back and what they need to do in a deeper dive. So looking at this as an opportunity to really help elevate New Jersey and its rich history is I think appealing for not only people who are visiting friends and relatives and maybe going for other kinds of vacations in New Jersey, but also for that heritage traveler who really wants to understand um, complex stories, um, broader stories, um, stories that maybe they don't know, as well as those visited places as well. And it really helps as far as then knitting all of it together in a way that is um, digestible and um, easy to access. And I think that that's really a key. You know, visitors today are overwhelmed. And so if you can help make it easy for them, this certainly is a way to do that. Thank you. Um, so I guess we will, Amy, do you want to um, start posing some questions and we will um, we'll answer them? Yeah, we had a couple short ones um, about the app itself and usage. Uh, the first one was, will my location be shared with other applications through this app? I usually have my phone set on location not revealed. The answer to that is no, we will not share your location with any other app. We are, we, we highly recommend, if you're using this on site, we highly recommend that you do have your location on or else the triggering will not function. If you're not on site, it's not as important to have your location on, but we are not going to share any personal information. And we are under, um, and those are, those are legal guys. Those are legal requirements as well as just our own integrity of our personal company. Uh, the next question is, can one download the app to a Chromebook or to a tablet? Uh, yes, you can. Going to, um, the website version, the plug-in version, you can um, use. Uh, you can use Chromebook. And I will also add, if you have a, um, a iPad and you do have 
um, satellite enabled on that, it will function the same as an iPhone in the field. And actually any uh, Android or um, Apple ta tablet. Some of them do not have G GPS um, functionality and that would be a limiting factor in the field, but the experience remotely always would work. Um, the triggering would require that you have GPS technology. Uh, the other question is, do users have to pay a fee to visit a tour? Um, we, we, ninety-nine percent of our tours, no. Uh, the app itself is free, and most of our tours are free as well. We have a few that are really premium tours that are uh, quite immersive. Um, for example, if you go to Yellowstone National Park, you get a really a mile by mile experience uh, with. It's as if you have a guide sitting next to you. Uh, in your car as you drive along. And so it's very, very immersive. And, and we have those for several national parks and for several area, other areas, and they cost a modest amount to buy. But to get into the app, and as I say, probably 99% of our tours are free. Uh, are biking tours waiting to be created, e.g. a circle route along the parallel trails on the New Jersey side of the Delaware River and then returning on the Pennsylvania side, who are the partners whom you would be, who, whom you would invite to conduct the tour? I'll take uh, uh, that one. I did mention that um, in our discussion there. Uh, and uh, I see that Jeffrey also has a second question. So uh, about um, 18th century. So our tours are going to be just American Revolution tours. We are crossroads the American Revolution. That is what our tours are going to be about. However, what's the beauty of these tours is that we have uh, you know, partners and friends who are not specifically American Revolution uh, related who are building tours along similar routes or routes where we cross. For example, I mentioned that, that uh, route, uh, the potential for that bike and driving route along the, both sides of the Delaware River, uh, where we, our tour would be about the preparation uh, for the crossing. But the Delaware, the DNR Greenway is actually planning to build a tour there about you know, the historic Delaware River towns, just in general. What that, the, be the beauty of that is that you, one or the other of us will attract somebody to drive that tour who might not have otherwise driven that. And somebody comes away with it and says, I really like that. I wanna do that route again, but with a different tour. And there you have it. You have the, that ability to do it. So while our tours are going to be just um, about the American Revolution itself and that period is that we were already seeing a, a lot of partners um, and interest in building tours that, that are different. So for example, we might have a tour a road to uh, um, uh, Morris uh, town that takes you through Somerville, but Somerville might want to create its own walking tour that's about Somerville and not just simply about the American Revolution. But now we have this cross fertilization there as well uh, that uh, you know, both, both groups are going to benefit from that. Uh, we have a couple questions just regarding partner participation. Um, who will be providing the content for the stories? Uh, will Crossroads be partnering with the sites along the way? Uh, how can sites participate and partner with Crossroads to get their Rev War stories included? So maybe just speak a little more about partner uh, participation here. Patrick, do you want to take that? Do you want me to start? What would you like to do? Uh, you, can, you can take that, Janice. Okay, well, you know, obviously um, we do have a team that's pulling this together and for the 10 crucial days we, we've, um, you know, worked with several of the sites along the way to come up with content. We're continuing to gather content. Uh, we're asking for photos from sites that we're going to pass along the way. So, um, you know, I, we do, you know, there's a very specific way that the scripts are written. Um, and we're working, um, Brad Fay, who's on the call, is going to be doing um, the first set of, of scripts for us. Um, but, you know, we're, we're certainly hoping that you will have content and want to be involved and want to share that with us. Would you like to add on that, uh, Patrick or, or Sally? Yeah, I think as uh, 
we, I said before is, you know, Amy is gonna be our contact. Many of you are already working with Amy um, if you're one of our partner sites. Um, so you already know her and, and we'll continue to do that. Make sure that you're, you're well represented uh, in, in these tours itself. Uh, and if it's something that's outside of the site specific as one of our, our themes that we're going to be doing along these tours, we're, we are already working and we've started working with historians from uh, all various walks of life. So, you know, for example, Larry Kidder is, is helping inform us on this first stage of 10 crucial days. Um, and, you know, you know, seeing what we can, we can't fit the kind of, you know, if you're doing uh, his and, and, and Roger's bus tour, along there, they can fit in a lot more than we can fit in this driving tour. So we have to figure out how to work it down. And, and so we can't, as I said, we can't fit everything in, but we're trying to make sure uh, that our overall goal is to get people interested in your site and coming to your site. And I think there's also opportunity. We've also dealing with uh, Richard Patterson from the old barracks. There's also opportunities um, down the road to include some video. Like we have great video of the Battle of uh, Trenton, and we have opportunity to add music and you know some sound effects. So I think it's going to be a very exciting um, set of tours for people to work with. And I think you know the issue is we need to be able to identify additional funding to keep doing more. And that's you know that's the goal. With it. Uh, we have another question about uh, the street view option, which is: Have you found that one consideration for sites may be what to what to omit from street view? Well, ninety nine point nine percent of users will enjoy the terrific access for only good reasons. Having images of the exteriors through street view may provide bad actors ways to plan thefts from the comforts of their living rooms. Some sites have living have limited security in our in remote locations, et cetera. How has this been considered? Uh, well, Christy, you might have some good thoughts on that. I, I will just say that, you know, Street View is a is a uh, is is technology that's offered by um, by Google. And we're just plugging into it and using it where it works for our tours. So that is, a, I think, a, a very valid and bigger question. But for the sites that we use uh, Street View, it's really, it's all public property. And we're uh, really using just a very tiny subset of what Google provides. Uh, Christy, do you want to add to that? I mean, I'm not saying it's you know, it's good everywhere, but in these locations, it feels like it's a very legitimate use because they're public sites. Um, Christy, do you have anything to add? That's exactly right. It is available via Google for anyone to see. The What we're pulling is nothing that is not publicly available. Um, and as you can see, there are limitations. So I don't know if you could see, but I couldn't go straight up to the building and look in the windows. There are limitations on Google and uh, on Google Street View, and there are some places where you can't get Street View. So we are just pulling what's already publicly available. And if for some reason there was an issue, we could certainly turn that off. Uh, what are the plans to promote the New Jersey stories nationally? Well, I'll just speak from our end and, and for all of our uh, tour sponsors, uh, sponsoring organizations, it's really a, a shared partnership in marketing. And we do market all of our tours and we work very, very closely with the sponsoring organizations that are really the primary responsibilities for marketing the tours. But we do lots. Uh, for example, for our New York tours, we have a heavy focus in New York and growing focus in New Jersey. We, but in New York, we go to the tourism conferences we, every year. We've been going for years. We do tremendous digital marketing. We do A-B testing. We have materials that we provide to our organizational sponsors, uh, flyers, uh, table tents, posters. So we are deeply involved in marketing. And that is one thing that distinguishes us as a company. We are with our uh, organizational partners forever. Uh, we stay with them and ensure their success. So that said, the organizations that are involved also need to do a lot of marketing. And I know. Crossroads is, is very committed to that because without strong marketing, there are just too many apps out there and this one will get lost in the shuffle. So we all have to be on deck with marketing, but we take it very, very seriously and put lots of resources into it. Um, 
Janice, do you want to speak to that? No, I, I think I think you've you've handled that. Um, uh, Amy, are there other questions? Because I I think there's a number on there that we would want to address. Yeah, I'll just jump in with the with the marketing uh, situation here because the question was about nationally marketing New Jersey. That in fact is the goal of the Revolution NJ uh, partnership effort leading up to 2026, and and we're able to do this at crossroads. Um, using our federal funding uh, to start rolling this out. Uh, I know there's a, there's a question about when are we going to start. We're starting, the ad, we're starting it right now with 10 crucial days. There was a question about our start. And we're gonna just continue to roll these out as we can get funding for them to do that. But the, the national marketing, this, this is going to be a piece of the package that we'll be able to contribute to that larger revolution NJ effort leading into uh, the 250th, which will have a significant marketing component to it nationally. Uh, we have a couple questions for travel stories. Uh, would like to know more about the engagement metrics in your most popular tours. Uh, what kind of uptake and downloads are there? What kind of demos or analytics can you get? What are the strategies to promote the app? What sponsorship do you, potential do you see? And is there a model for tours to make money? Woo, there's a lot of questions there. Uh, well, well, I'll take some of them and Christy can take some of them. Uh, tours making money, I'll take that one because uh, I come out of the nonprofit world and know how uh, important revenue generation is uh, for, um, for nonprofit organizations. And there are many ways on the app that you can actually generate revenue. So I can speak with you offline if you'd like to know more, but just know that we thought about that from the very, very beginning. We wanted to connect people to places, but also to the organizations that sustain those places because the traveler rarely knows who does all the hard work to do the interpretation or to conserve an area. So that piece of it is, is really important to us that you have that opportunity. There are advertising opportunities as well, but we do not like uh, a lot of, um, you know, cheap advertising on our high quality tours. So we are very, very strict about the kind of advertising that can be got, done, including um, you know, sponsorships. We have a tour of a, um, a large city park in Birmingham, Alabama that's sponsored by Blue Cross Blue Shield, for example, because they wanted to get people out exercising. So there's that whole piece, but I'm happy to address that with you. Let's see, um, Christy, do you wanna take a couple others of those? And I will find that question and make sure we cover all of that. Absolutely, so analytics, every um, every tour uh, build organization, every tour building organization gets quarterly analytics. So we report back about each quarter, the 15th of the month after every quarter. And we give them session duration, individual users, um, locations of those users, any number of things. And we're always improving those um, so, so that you can look back and see, okay, why were we, why did we have a spike in usage here? And was it related to a marketing effort? Um, so you will get uh, quarterly analytics every every quarter. And we are trying to enhance that um, as we go. You also get an industry report on what the state of travel and an overall app. Um, you know, how is our app doing uh, report every quarter? That's and we're, we really are investing right now in um, improving and expanding uh, our analytics and really providing a lot more information. So in the coming months, uh, you're going to see that uh, if you're a, a tour sponsor, uh, they are confidential. We don't share uh, analytics for one sponsor with the public or anybody else. But um, you know, if you did um, build a tour with us, you would see enhanced analytics coming up. And you can also ask us to collect more information. So if there's specific information you'd like to collect or specific sites you'd like to see how visitation is, how downloads are, we can, we can do all that. So it's a, we believe that every company is primarily an analytics company today. And this data is critically important to you going forward. Uh, can you explain the process of how content will be created for each location and story? How will the scripts be created? It sounds as though there will be just a few Crossroads authors who will do the narration. Can stories be vetted by the location partners and will their input be considered and included? 
Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And again, we'll go back to you know our our main contact is Amy for 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 you know people who want to be involved. And in fact, we'll be proactive as we know that we're going getting funding to roll out tours in a certain area. We will you know look to folks in those areas to see if what tours we we can create and what the what the themes and contacts will be. But to, to answer that specific question is that. You know, this is a th these are Crossroads of the American Revolution tours. Uh, these have to, you know, these are our brand tours, which means we're going to speak. These tours are going to be speaking with one voice. Now, the narrator on each tour may be different, um, but but the voice and uh, and the way we present the stories will will need to have um, the same kind of thematic structure. Uh, overall, so that we can continue to reinforce our brand and how we tell these stories. And, and that means uh, we are unlikely to be able to plug in something that you recorded yourself for your, for your story. We would have to re rewrite it and re-record it so that it matches the way that our narrative flows. Um, but that, as I said, if you, if you are creating your own uh, tour, for your own site or for your own town or whatever it is that's gonna plug in, then you create your own tour and we find ways that we can cross promote uh, that information. But to get the information to us, yes, it will be Crossroads writing this story. The, the, the funding for, the, for this is coming from Crossroads, from our various funders through Crossroads, but it is a Crossroads branded product. Um, and so that, that, that means that, that will follow uh, the kind of the brand identity and equity uh, procedures that we set up. Uh, maybe if it, Janice, if it's okay for me to add one thing, you know, one of the things that distinguishes Travel Stories GPS from a lot of the other companies in this space is that we do curated tours. So there are crowdsourced companies that just provide a platform for you to put up whatever you'd like to put up, but we are really more interested in the user and providing high quality experiences to the users. So that's really our brand. And that's why we're so excited to have Patrick and Janice and her team involved because they value that high quality. And that's what we're really looking for in terms of our partners. That said, if you don't have this kind of sophisticated team that we have at Crossroads, we can provide a tremendous amount of coaching. We can give you writers, we can give you narrators, we can help you write. We we provide those services. We're just very lucky with Crossroads. They, they have all those services in house, so. And I might just address the one question that asks about the status of the project and are we piloting any tours or is funding required? Some people may have joined a little bit later. I did address that in the opening remarks. Um, we do have funding that was, um, reallocated due to COVID and expenses that we did not have to incur. So we're using um, some of our National Park Service funding to start the 10 Crucial Days project. And we're then moving to the Road to Morristown project. Um, we are seeking additional funding because that's not gonna cover everything. And we are applying for grants to do um, other tours along the way. So yes, we are getting started and we hope, I would think, what are we looking in July? Is that still the target? I think of what we're looking to try to do for the, um, for the first one. That's what we're, that's what we're hoping, hoping to do if, if all things fall um, as we would hope that they would, um, you know, for, for that to happen. Um, and I think there's another question about how much Funding is required. And I think, you know, as we've been building these budgets and looking at it, it depends upon what we're including. Patrick, did you want to like address it a little bit from um, how, you know, how we need to take a look at each of the stories mm -hmm. and figure out what is going to be included in yeah. that? Right. I mean, th there are a lot of different factors here in terms of uh, what uh, the cost of a tour will be. <clears throat> One of them, um, it just simply is, are you guiding people along this tour? Are you giving them wayfinding directions? Are you just simply giving them you know, a, a cluster of sites and saying you, you can click on the site and get the directions via, via Google Maps or Waze or whatever you use on your own phone to get there. And then once you get there, then you can listen to the story. Our, 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 the, the routes that we're building out right now include a lot of twists and turns. And in fact, we can use those turn, that turning directions to actually give little factoids along the way. 
uh, you know, you're, you're now going to bear right at the light ahead. And this is where the two columns uh, of Washington's, uh, the Continental Army were split on their way into Trenton, for example, would, could be one of our wayfinding uh, directions there. But all of those little things add up uh, to the overall cost. And so we, you can't give you just a, a flat, you know, fee about how much something would cost. But we will talk to you about, you know, in partnership about doing this and doing this with the, with the Crossroads brand, if, if you in fact want to create a, an American Revolution tour. You know, I saw one, a, a suggestion there about forage wars um, and doing a forage wars tour. And there, there are many places that we can do that throughout the state, uh, in fact, um, where we can decide, is that a route that we want to create uh, that people have to follow, you know, we'll create the wayfinding and they follow these routes or are they destination tours where we just create a few destinations and people can find their way from one to the next uh, in order to, you know, hear that, that tour. And those will, will all change the cost as well. And I did want to, I, I reread Nancy's questions about the, the process of writing these scripts. And I just want to make sure that, you know, make sure we, you know, we don't have, you know, an exact form of process written down, like you have to submit this in this format. As I said, what we're going to do is we're going to be proactive. And when we know that we're going to get funding for a certain region or area of, of a tour, we're going to reach out to those partners in that tour and let them know what's going to happen. So, uh, and we are going to talk to you about, you know, these are the kinds of things that we have in, uh, in planned. Um, we have these ideas. What ideas do you have? What things would you like to um, have covered? And then we're gonna take all that information come back and say, okay, what can we do in a tour that takes approximately 90 minutes of drive time where we maybe be able to fit in, you know, uh, 12 to 15 different stories along that route. Um, and then we have to make those decisions about how to do that. But that's, that's, that's really what the process is going to be. And, and if there is one where we're specifically coming back to, to a site, we're gonna work closely with that site to make sure that we, within the three months, the three minutes that we have uh, allotted to be able to talk about that site uh, in that particular location, that we hit some of the key things that are going to, again, encourage people to explore that site more. Aren't going to give you every, every uh, date and detail about what happened at that site, but it's going to give you a flavor of what that site's about so that you want to explore it a little bit more. Just a, a little bit on, more on pricing. Uh, we do have standard packages. And most tours, this is a complex tour. The tours in New Jersey are complex because uh, you have to follow many different roads and therefore you need a lot of wayfinding. We do build much simpler tours like downtown tours where you just are walking around the downtown or we build a lot of scenic byways where it's just one road and there's no need for wayfinding. So we do have these simple packages but we're also very happy to customize them as we've uh, done with Crossroads to meet their needs. We, we really want to make it work for you. So we will give you lots of ways to move it into your budget if we possibly can. And then just one other thing about uh, destination tours, uh, which are the ones that Patrick mentioned where there isn't a route, we actually have embedded in the app directions. So anywhere in the world that you are, you tap on that site and we will get audio directions to that site. Um, so, or let's say in the United States, I'm not sure how it does if you're in Europe giving you directions, but um, it, it will give you directions. So the destination tours are a lot simpler in that regard, but the route tours really have a wonderful added value in that you're following a specific route, a historic route, uh, any kind of route that might exist, a scenic byway, for example. So uh, we're happy to talk to you about pricing and we can, we can keep it simple most of the time, not all the time. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I and, wanted to. Uh, I, I wanted to jump in. One. I'm sorry, Janice. If I can jump in because I, I I see there's a follow up to, to, to my response there, a follow up question. So for for further clarification, in terms of historical accuracy as it relates to your site, yes, we will allow you to review that for that for the historical accuracy. We may not be able to take your uh, suggestions about well, you should have covered this story, you should have covered that story. But in terms of reviewing the, the text that we have on our script for historical accuracy, yes, yes, we will be doing that um, as it pertains to individual sites, as it pertains to uh, other stories that we're telling that we will consult with historians uh, that are experts in that area or in those themes who will review for historical accuracy as well. 
And I was just going to address the idea. Uh, the, there was a question about who was going to do the narration. And, you know, we're looking for, you know, really good voices and people that we know that that can can do that. Um, the other thing that we didn't address, in addition to narration, we're going to have some first person um, portions of this where it will not just be the um, narrator. There'll be other audio. Patrick, did you want to uh, address that at all? Yeah, we're trying to make it as interesting as possible, just like our, our, our Revolutionary Neighbors uh, project, where the idea is that we're looking for ways that people can identify with somebody from the American Revolution. They can see themselves in, in a story there, is that our scripts will also include, you know, uh, diary entries uh, from somebody. And they won't be read by the narrator, it'll be read by an actor who's portraying that particular person. Uh, there's just one more quick question about the uh, app itself and let me find it. Uh, is there a way to tell how long a tour will be in time or distance before beginning it? Yes, each tour um, has a duration. When you tap on each tour, there's a, a preview page and it'll say how long approximately this tour should take. And we can specify whatever um, we think it should take. Um, looking through the questions, I also see um, uh, uh, Jeffrey had a question about Greenwich um, and if you zoom in on that uh, red line uh, for that tour through Cumberland County, yes, Greenwich is on that red line. We didn't, we didn't forget it. Uh, there's a couple specific questions uh, from Freehold from Bergen, and I'm going to take this chance to share my screen um, with my contact information. I'm Amy Osterhout speaking. <laughs> um, I am the program manager at Crossroads, so I will be the point person, uh, as we've said for this. So you can find my email here. Um, and just to kind of, for my own sanity, uh, when you send your emails, if you can just kind of give a, a short heads up in the subject line of what this is about, whether it's um, funding questions or content questions or partnership questions, um, that'll really help me kind of keep keep all the questions straight and forward. Um, some of the, especially some of the other the other questions that we got that are more specific to specific counties or sites, um, those would probably be best directed to me, um, and then we can get back to you and be able to give you more specific answers. Um, so that's that's my contact info, and it will also be on our website uh, after this recording is posted. I noticed there's a, there's a new question up there too about incorporating augmented reality. Um, before I turn it over to uh, Story and Christy about the technical aspect of it, I want to say, you know, this is uh, something that, that at Crossroads we've been thinking about for years and trying to do. And just happened to, to see that a dance company just created an augmented reality program at the Colonnade at Princeton Battlefield, where as you take your phone over there to the Colonnade, then you can see these dancers dancing around as you hold up your phone. This is something that, that we've, we've thought about. It's gotta be a place where you can do it safely. Um, you, you can't do it in the middle of the street because people can walk into the middle of the street. Uh, you know, I thought you know, it'd be great if you could take you know, a, a cityscape that it's changed um, and create a, a, an augmented reality program on your phone where they, somebody can hold up a phone and see what it looked like in 1776. Uh, you can see Ben Franklin and, and John Adams arguing over closing the window at uh, the Indian uh, Queen Tavern in New Brunswick, for example. But unfortunately, it's a very busy road there and you don't want to do that. But a battlefield is a great place to, to be able to do that where you can hold up your phone and you can see a battle unfolding. Um, so it's something that we've been thinking about all along that we'd like to do. Um, the, the question is about incorporating it, how you would incorporate it in the, into this particular app or be something that we would direct people to that would be outside of the app. Um, and if you want to talk to the uh, if story or Christy just simply want to talk to the technical aspect of that. You know, we can certainly do it. It's not currently in the app, but we can add it. I mean, if there was uh, a lot of interest, it's not that difficult at all to provide that. And we've thought about it for years. 
we have been very cognizant of the safety concerns that Patrick mentioned. And really, it's only good for very, very limited locations where you don't get people stepping into traffic, as, as Patrick said. But we can certainly add that um, if, there's, if there's demand for it. It's not complicated or difficult to do. It obviously does cost a bit of money because you have to create whatever you're seeing with the augmented reality. But, in, um, but we're not opposed to adding it at some future date if, it's, if there's a lot of demand. We, we currently, though, really believe in audio because we really want people to engage with what they're seeing. And we don't want them to be pulling up their phones and engaging with what is on their phones, uh, which people do anyway. But we're trying to get people away from that and really give them very memorable experiences by engaging more of their senses in where they are, their eyes, their ears, they're actually there, because that's really how memories are created. And we really want to be part of that memory creation. You know, that said, there are some interesting things that we're working on that work well in battlefields, like smart, smart signs, where there are lots of signs on a battlefield, we can take all that audio, we can translate them. So we can sort of augment the reality of uh, signs. But as far as adding visuals, we certainly can, but it's, it's really not the core of what we do right now. I would argue that we are somewhere between assisted reality and augmented reality, depending on you know, what, how you define it. I think most people think of augmented reality as, some, as just like Patrick said, you hold up your phone and you see something in that area. We consider ourselves to be actually adding information to your reality so again augmented reality but uh i we have we are always having the discussion about adding in more features and how to do that in an elegant way that doesn't take away from our main um our main mission great thank you um, we really do appreciate everyone taking the time to spend this uh, beautiful afternoon with us inside um, uh, to learn about the app. We're ex very excited about um, bringing this um, to New Jersey so we can enhance and um, get more visitors out to sites and learn about um, the rich revolutionary legacy that New Jersey has. Um, please um, keep in touch with us. And if you have other questions, we'll be happy to, to answer them. Um, and again, we, we uh, really appreciate your joining us today. Um, Patrick, anything else you'd like to say? No, thank you all. I look forward to um, working with folks on this. We're very, very excited about it. We do think, uh, somebody asked that question about national marketing. We do think that this is uh, one of these brand uh, products that we are going to be able to use to introduce new, the rest of the country to what New Jersey really is. Absolutely. And I do think this is something also that we could generate some media coverage of, obviously, you know, as we're kicking these off and we're hoping as we're having voices that people might even be interested in who's, who's putting their name along with what we're doing. So I think, uh, I think there's some opportunity to do that. And there's also an opportunity as you travel. I, I was in um, down near Washington, DC. And as I'm looking at the app, I, I'm seeing the coming soon uh, 10 crucial days. So we're really excited about that. And also the opportunity to highlight um, funders that are making this possible. There, you know, you saw a little bit about, about that during the demonstration. Uh, we can find out other ways to do that as well. And Janice, if I could just say too, you know, one of the things that's really great about this is that um, because of the two international gateways, both in Philadelphia and in Newark, it'll also be really great for, um, you know, the tourism office to be able to sell internationally. And I think it will have a lot of people who will come in and that'll be a great opportunity, especially even with the Spanish speaking um, uh, language capabilities there. So it's a really going to be a wonderful product that I know that um, Jeff and his team at the tourism office will be very happy with. Terrific, thank you, Cheryl. And, you know, there is an opportunity, obviously, not only to do Spanish, but to do other languages and to do kids tours. And we, we think that this is, um, this is a great opportunity to continue to tell stories and build on them and, and add to them as new content comes available. So we thank you.
Okay. Well, if, if um, there is nothing else, we're just, again, really happy um, that you joined us this afternoon and look forward to um, finding out more about your stories that we can continue to tell. Thank you all.